Hey guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another one. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Arma Limitless and how we possibly can get the layout to work for this specific motor. This is the 1721 2400 kV motor and it is too big for our stock configuration. We're gonna go through and see exactly what we have to do in order to get this to fit. We're probably gonna to have to pull a ton of components out of our car and we'll work through it bit by bit. So as you can see, this car has very little room for a very large motor. This does not work if we try to go and locate it on the stock configuration here. There's absolutely no room for this to physically fit. So we have to do something about this. So what I'm thinking is, and I know a lot of others do this on the Arma vehicles, is we can rotate this 180 degrees. This will allow the motor to actually sit in this configuration back here. So one of the first things that we should do here is remove the two battery bays. We're gonna get rid of these guys and give us some more room. Then the next thing we'll do is we'll take this guy right out, we'll swap it 180 and drop it right back. Now another thing to note is I do have a couple gears. So what I did is I 3D printed both of these gears just to be able to mock them up and make sure that they're going to work before hitting the purchase button. So this just gives me the confidence to know that everything's going to be okay before I go and bring components in that may not be suitable for what I'm trying to do. So just an added step there, it's not necessary, but why not? So let's get started and pull a bunch of components out. First thing I'm gonna do, as mentioned, is I'm gonna start ripping apart those batteries, the battery bay here, and give ourselves some room. So I know that on the outside, it's going to be these three screws here that connect the battery. So I'm gonna start pulling these guys out. Okay, the battery looks like it's out and I am gonna to have to go and pull these three screws on the outside out as well. So let's go ahead and get those out. Wow, that's a lot of screws here. So there's all the screws for the battery bay. I'm gonna flip this guy back around and we should have our second battery bay now able to get off of here. So there we go, those are out. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go and start to remove this center red post. This is going to be something that strengthens the chassis right from the front to the rear differential cases. I'm gonna go and pull the front off because it looks like it's a lot easier to get access to this rather than this. It's really tight right here. I'd have to pull a bunch of other stuff out. So let's go and do that. That should be quite simple here. Okay, now we can go and lift this all the way over the top. In order to gain access to the center gear here, we're gonna go and pull these four screws out from the top cover plate. This will provide us access to that gear assembly, and we more than likely can just lift that right out from its channels here. And then what we wanna do is start to take off the screws from the bottom of our chassis plate. We're gonna take those screws out for this center section so that we can get the whole assembly rotated around and see how that looks if it, when it's mocked up. One of the things that we may have to do is pull our radio slash ESC uh, area here. We might have to take this out and look at what we'll have to do for that as well. So let's go and start off with our top cover here. So there's the top cover plate. We get that off of our center gear assembly. I can put this now off to the side and the next thing we're gonna look at is lifting out this assembly. So you can see it's loose now. It should be able to just slide right out. Okay, and there's the front drive shaft goes to the front differential and the rear drive shaft goes to, of course, the rear differential. So there's our center gear assembly. We're gonna wanna go and mock up this gear right here onto it just to see what that looks like. As you can see, the size difference is quite significant. There's quite a significant difference between the tooth count on the metal gear and the mock-up 3D printed. Eventually, we're gonna go and purchase this gear so that we can permanently assemble and install it once we know that we got something that's going to work. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and heat up this section here. Now, I would highly recommend that without you even trying or attempting to do this, to just apply a bunch of heat to these guys in order to get them off. The heat is gonna break down the thread locking component that's more than likely on there and it'll allow quicker access to breaking these things free. Otherwise you could damage the screw or you can damage your, damage your Allen set and you don't wanna do either. 
So hit, we'll hit it with some heat and then we'll pull it off. So we hit it with about 20 seconds of heat. That should be more than enough to get this broken loose. Oh yeah, it's like butter coming apart right now. So that's nothing. So we should be able to now gain access. So everything here is gonna be red hot. So I'm gonna try and do things quickly here. I'm gonna take the set screw right out. I'm gonna place it off to the side and I'm gonna try and see how hot everything is. Yeah, it's still toasty. Should be able to pull it off. It's a little bit of a twist and pull and that guy comes right off. So we'll set that off to the side and now we can see the assembly. So it looks like we got one bearing and then we got a spacer here. I think it's a spacer, not, there it is. So one spacer that goes onto that side and now we have the gear. So the next thing to do is take apart this set screw that goes right through, it looks like it goes right through the shaft here. We'll get that off and then we should have access to this main gear. So when you place this pin right through the center of the shaft, what you essentially do to this assembly is place this pin in what is known as double shear. So in order to actually break or bust up this pin, you have to shear it twice. So you get obviously double the strength as if you were to just do what these typical components on the end here do and they only have a set screw contacting one surface so a lot stronger when you go through the entire center of your shaft all right this gear is giving me a little bit of trouble I'm gonna try and work on this a little bit later get this knocked off so that we can take it off and try and mock up our other gear so this is what the gear looks like if we just go and place it right on the shaft it's a little bit of a tight squeeze the diameter right there is just under eight barely under eight millimeters and I'd have to ream it out a little bit in order to get that to fit fully so you could see the difference there in the size of the gear, our mocked up gear, this is 42 tooth versus our stock gear here. Let's now take off this here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take the screws off of the plastic component. It's a lot easier to take off the screws of the plastic component. Once this is out of the way, then I can apply heat yet again to our center mount. Now I would expect that any sort of metal, especially when it's tied into the chassis of our radio control car is going to have some thread locker on, especially like a motor mount. This is quite important so that nothing moves. So I'm gonna hit it with heat where all the locations of the screws are, and this will help us be able to extract those screws a lot easier for us. We don't wanna go and damage anything. We wanna make sure we get these out with ease. So the screws that we're working with right now are these two here. We're gonna pull those out. Yep, no problem. These screws are the, probably the easiest ones yet. So we'll pull this guy out. All right, and the screw fell through, of course. Let's grab that, and let's see. So this is what I'm talking about for these screws. I give it a good push, and it just it doesn't wanna go, and I'm not gonna go and force it. So I'm gonna go and apply some heat to that, and we'll check in. See if we can break it loose now. So there we go. Even though there was quite a bit of heat, it's still tough. And you can feel the thread locking compound that is definitely in here, making it very difficult to get out. A little heat for a minute or so, and then it's definitely easier to come out. We're gonna do the exact same thing for each of the other two screws. So it's gonna take us a good minute just to go and heat it up and then allow us to get our Allen key on it and pull it all the way out. So now it's free, and there you go, you can see the the thread locking component right there on it and it's all over the place inside here so now this guy here what's going to happen is we're going to have this assembly it was assembled right now it was like this so we're going to go in 180 it so that means we're going to look like something like this is what we're going to end up with so that's essentially how it's going to go and then our motor would of course go and bolt right up right in here so that looks perfect so the next thing to do is just go and fasten. We're gonna mock up those screws. I'm gonna go and reapply thread locker after. We're gonna go and have everything mocked up and then after, I'm not, not sure if I'm gonna go and record that. We'll actually go and back those screws out, put some thread locker on them and then put them right back in. So now's just the mock-up we'll go through and we'll apply those three screws back. We'll get that assembled, get the other plastic mount back up and installed and we'll look at what we have from there. So there we go. What's interesting about this installation here is that there is already a milled out screw fastener for this. 
So that's available. So I'm not doing anything custom. I didn't drill and set anything up here. I'm just simply flipping it. There's already holes for the installation, which makes this so simple. All right, so those are all mounted. They're not tight, they're just snug up, that's it. Just trying to mock things up, as mentioned. And now we're gonna go and put this guy in. So we know that it has to go in this orientation. So this is the orientation that we need that in. It's just 180 from the other location on this side. And we can drop our fasteners in. So it looks good, looks good so far. Our motor now is gonna have tons of room on this side of the chassis. That pretty well settles exactly where the motor installation is going to be. So what I'm gonna do, since I already have them, some of those fasteners we pulled out of the car, I'm actually gonna use to mock this up. I only need two fasteners for this, a quick mock up. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna go and arrange this in such a way where we mount this guy, something like that just to give us an idea as to what we're dealing with here. And then what we can do is place this on properly. So let's go and get that done. All right, so it's mocked up. I haven't fastened or tightened anything much at all. I just got it simply located in there. And what I want to do now is just pop our, our pinion gear on. Let's see which way, it probably doesn't matter. This is just for mock up. We're gonna get that going here. This guy took a little bit of convincing to get off. I did have to go and use another setup than what I have right here. Uh, nonetheless, I do have it off. And now what we can do is we can go and throw our main test gear here on and just check what we got going on. Oh yeah, so everything's looking pretty good. Throw our bearing on, small spacer, then the bearing. So we got a small spacer, then the bearing, then our drive dog coupler. And we can move everything down from there. And we can push all the bearings over to the one side. And there's our mock-up. So now we can see how much room we have when we're mocked up like this. So you can see that this is looking like it's going to work. You can see I actually cracked our pinion gear when trying to force that on. It opened it itself up. I didn't have that reamed out to the proper size. Doesn't matter. This is a 42 and a 22 tooth gear that we're using here. And it looks like we'll have a little bit of room to go down if we need to in size. So if we had to go from 22 to 21, it looks like we'll have a little bit of room for adjustment here. I'm liking how it looks so far. So there's our gear set. So that goes to show exactly what we're trying to accomplish here. We got a little bit of room where we can go and, and make some adjustments. We're actually very, very close to the center of our range, which means we can move almost the equal distance out versus in. It does look like our gearing is going to work. Now these have been mocked up, as I mentioned, using 3D printing. If we were to actually use a motor like a tenth of this size, these things would absolutely get obliterated, especially the way that I ended up printing it and designing these gears. Uh, so they won't, they won't work. Luckily what I have in order to actually mock these up is professional CAD software that uh, it has a library for all kinds of gear. So no matter which gear I'm looking for, I can go in and select almost like a configurator, all the different specifications, hit the go button and it creates it for myself. Then from there, I only need to add the features in there such as the bore and maybe some cutouts or slots or anything in the actual major part of the gear. So really cool stuff right there. Another point is this gearing combination is landing right in the center of our motor mount. That means I can move this motor mount out or or in almost by the same dimension. This is ideal. A couple of you asked me about the 64 tooth count of the combination of the gear. So if I add up both these gears, it adds up to 64. And the way that I went and calculated that is by using the center to center distance in millimeters between my motor shaft as well as our spur gear shaft. From there, I ended up breaking it into a tooth count. Now, if you guys want something like that, I can come up with a calculator, throw it on the radiocontrolinfo.com website. Uh, it's up to you. I don't think something like this is necessary. A lot of us are just mocking up gears that will work, putting them in the proper place and going from there. We have a ton of pinion gears that we have access to in our boxes. And if not, we can go and buy them and experiment there. This is my first combination of eight millimeter bores for the pinion gears. So I wanted to make sure that I had a really good idea as to what's going on here. So that's why we ended up 3D printing these and coming up with a calculation and everything 
everything so far is looking okay. So the next thing to do is to see if we possibly can get the speed control located at the very back behind the motor here. I'm not sure it's gonna fit. It looks like it's really tight in this area as well. Otherwise, we're gonna have to go and find a spot on this side of the car for it. And if we do that, that means our battery packs are gonna have to fit within this region here, which might be doable. We'll have to see exactly how that looks and how it goes. Um, other than that, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and especially if you made it all the way to the end. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so you can continue to follow all these videos as we build this radio control Arma Limitless.